Hello, welcome back to our fourth installment in this uh, series on how I built my own angle of attack sensor and indicator. In my last video I said I was going to do a tutorial on 3D printing. As I was going through and looking at the models and uh, starting to 3D print some parts, I realized that I wasn't very happy with the design, so I decided to uh, make some updates. So this video, rather than being about 3D printing, it's going to be about some uh, updates that I've made on the uh, the sensor itself, the parts, um, as well as some of the software that uh, runs in the background on the device. Um, I've changed quite a bit. Um, that pretty much every every part um, has been redesigned. Um, you'll notice the button is no longer on the top, it's now on the side. It's no longer a square, it's uh, a little bit more aerodynamic, it's kind of a more of a cylinder shape. Um, I've also tried to make the, the wind vane a little bit more um, aerodynamic as well, so the wind will kind of pass around a little easier than it used to, or it used to have kind of a square edge on it. Um, I've also, uh, this is probably the coolest part I think, um, there's a battery cover here on the back that has a little latch with a switch, a spring-loaded switch. So you can push the little switch here and it'll open up. And in the back is where the batteries go. This is pretty well how it was already designed before. Um, it's kind of a, the same, it looks almost exactly the same as it did before. Um, you can see here with the battery, it's uh, got the 9-volt um, type of connector on it. Um, but it runs off of four double A's instead and down inside of the device here You can see that uh, It has the opposite end of that. So when I push this in it'll actually plug into those two terminals down there Just Kind of slide it in and then clicks into place so Close that and clips into place And then we can turn this on Give it a second and that light should start blinking um, if it's flashing slow like that, it means it's turned on but not connected to anything. I did do an op update on the Arduino software as well. Um, that update is, um, it used to pass um, five characters or five bytes. I have updated the code on the Arduino so it uses float values which um, actually take up a little less space. Um, they, they only send four bytes so it's a little tiny bit more efficient that way um, in terms of um, sending data over Bluetooth. Um, all right, so let's check out the uh, software now. Uh, a few changes have been made on that as well. Um, I'll go ahead and open this up. Um, okay, you have the disclaimer here to scroll up and then hit agree and continue. Um, since I've already got this device turned on, again, you can see the light flashing here. Let's get this over into the view so you can see it. Um, I can hit the start scanning and it will start to scan for any devices. After a few seconds, it should find the, uh, the device. And I can hit stop scanning once it's found it. And then I can press connect. And at this point, the device is connected. You can tell because on the device itself, on the sensor, it's now flashing once every, I think it's set to three seconds or something like that. Just a quick little blip so it doesn't uh, waste battery for very long. It just kind of blinks once and then goes off for a bit. Um, so hopefully from this angle we can you can see this number right here. It says what the current reading is on the device. All right, so here's the biggest change in the software. Um, I was talking to my son about this, and he's he was saying, yeah, I think it's great that it flashes and tells you when you're going to stall, but what I don't like is it doesn't give you any warning. It's like it you have a warning, and then you have a few degrees, and then you hit the stall. And he said, I'd rather have kind of um, like an analog uh, gauge almost something that would show me how close I am and and I said you know that's a pretty good idea so um, I went ahead and changed um, the indicator on this so if I go here um, we can now as I move a little winglet here as we're getting steeper and steeper and steeper it's gonna tip up or down so it kind of follows um, what the winglet does and gives you a little better I think a little better indication uh, than it used to. And you can see that the little uh, the little airfoil that moves on the screen here changes color with uh, depending on the mode you're in here. If you're flying straight and level it's going to be you know kind of a blue color and as you get up to the yellow it's going to change into a yellow color and then if you get into red it'll start squawking at you saying put your nose down and the um, 
and the airfoil turns red. Um, just in case anybody else still likes the old design, I've left that here. I can just push this little button that says Swish Indicator, and it still has the old version as well with arrows and, and symbols instead. I actually do like the analog gauge that uh, doesn't just tell you when you've crossed a threshold, but it actually maps when you're going to cross a threshold, and you can see what's going on with it. So if you look at the top half of this uh, new design, um, it has a four bolt pattern uh, so that people can design their own mounts. Um, currently, uh, my 3D printer is working on printing a Cessna 152 strut mount uh, that bolts up to these four holes here. Um, uh, you could potentially design your own uh, mount. Um, maybe it's just a suction cup you hang from the bottom of your wing or something, I don't know. All right, well, hopefully that was a quick update that was uh, valuable to you. I, I took off the whole week between uh, Christmas and New Year's um, with the idea that I would be able to uh, just spend some time working on this. Uh, not That wasn't my only turn. <laughs> I wanted to spend some time with my family too, but um, while I had some time, I thought I'd throw a few hours into this as well. Uh, what I was really surprised about is the amount of time that I spent 3D printing these new parts. Um, so the top and bottom, um, you can see with screw holes here on, on either side, that's where it sandwiches together. Um, each of those halves takes about 24 hours to print on my, on my 3D printer. Um, so it was pretty frustrating to, to design the thing out, go put it on the printer, and then be like, okay, I gotta wait until tomorrow before I can pull this off and make sure it works. I went through a couple of different iterations during that time. Um, but it seems to all fit pretty well at this point. Um, it's pretty solid. Um, I'm pretty happy with uh, it's much more rigid than the old um, prototype version was. Um, I'm much more happy with this, I think, now. The next video will actually uh, be about 3D printing. Um, during this time where I've been building this, um, I've spent a lot of time with my printer just running and running and running um, for days. Uh, it's probably been you know, to, to build this entire device, it probably takes about five days worth of printing. Um, just be prepared for a long time. Um, but during that time, I was able to capture some video and uh, I'll be compiling that together to put into a 3D printing video that'll be coming up next. So looking forward to getting uh, some of these uh, models and drawings out there so people can start building their own. Um, so stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that um, and click the little bell so you're notified when the next video uploads. It should be in the next couple of weeks. Um, again, it's going to take me a little while because I've, I've spent a lot of time just actually working on it and haven't been really uh, doing this dialogue thing that I have to do to kind of make things flow better. Um, but yeah, in the next, uh, next couple of weeks we should have a video ready that uh, talks about the experience of 3D printing all the parts of this. So stay tuned. Um, we'll see you later.